we walk towards an unimaginable reunion. In the time of the virus, we dream of walking as an exercise of freedom and connectivity. In the time of the Nazis, walking at gunpoint, a bark of dog and military uniform was a living nightmare. Today, people walk in fear from war, drought, bigotry and poverty. I am a second generation Holocaust survivor. In my work as an installation artist, I explore issues of memory, loss and inherited trauma. Through my work, I am trying to get closer to the family I was never able to know and to the life and culture of Jewish Eastern Europe that was totally destroyed by the Nazis. For me, making the connections between then and now is a call to action. The importance of retelling and remembering is what drives me. I curate and host walks. Walking, we ask questions and share. It's a powerful, non-confrontational and convivial way of exploring the past in the present. Physical movement, feeling the elements on our skin, feeling the ground beneath our feet, walking, touching, seeing, making, we think with our whole bodies. This project, Sarah's Last Steps, is of particular personal significance. It's about my mum, my uncle and my grandmother. Uncle Peretz, my mum's brother, was one of the Windermere children. He had survived the Lodge Ghetto and Buchenwald concentration camp and was finally liberated at the end of the war from Theresienstadt in the Czech Republic. He was one of the 300 young refugees flown to Carlisle in the summer of 1945. The heritage story of the Lake District is about offering welcome, sanctuary and renewal. The group of young Jewish refugees who arrived in the summer of 1945 experienced different welcomes as Jews, as children, as outsiders and as temporary residents of the Calgarth estate near Windermere. Sanctuary and Exile, the programme of creative work we will do with the Lake District Holocaust Project, is anchored on the story of the Windermere children and its contemporary resonances. The opening walking project is Sarah's Last Steps. My grandparents, Sarah and Fischel, had three children, David, Peretz and Esther. It was a vibrant Yiddish-speaking socialist household. When the Nazis invaded Poland, my grandfather and David left to join the partisans. They died fighting in the resistance. In the Lodge Ghetto, Peretz was arrested, forcibly parted from his mother and sister. When the ghetto was liquidated, Sarah and Esther were transported to Auschwitz. They were separated on arrival and Sarah, my grandma, was killed. My mum, Esther, was liberated from Bergen-Belsen at the end of the war. She was 16 years old. Sarah's Last Steps takes the route walked by Lorna's grandmother to the Auschwitz gas chambers and transposes it to the site of the Calgarth estate. It was on the Calgarth estate that Peretz discovered that his sister, Esther, had survived the Nazi genocide. Perhaps our walk will take us across the very spot where Peretz opened the letter confirming that Esther was alive and recovering in Sweden. This is a slow walk about resistance and memory about bodies in motion, forced and unforced, walking with unbearable separations and unimaginable reunions. My mother always worried about what would happen when all first generation survivors have gone. Who would tell those stories? Who would keep those memories alive? Our project is our way of doing just that and bringing alive the lessons for today. 
Sanctuary in Exile, Sarah's Last Steps are delayed because of the virus, but the invitation to take part is still very much open. Have a look at the website, and if you'd like to walk with us or find out more, please get in touch. <laughs>